when you understand the things of god then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish anything that dominates the thought of a man you get it so meaning that you need to have the right thought about something but when you see his government first his rule first his interest first we can know the interest of god from the written word we can know what he's putting first Praise God. I just want to thank God for this morning. He's a good God. You know, yesterday I was praying for today and I thought I would teach you people. But as I was praying, God says, no, you are not going to teach. Yeah. Mm? It's going to be a prophetic service. <laughs> And then he gave me the word, which was already there. The word was there because I, I saw you people coming. I saw God lifting you. I saw God lifting you. Praise God. Times and seasons are in his hands. That's what you need to know. God is changing your story. He holds the entire universe. He's the creator of the universe. Yeah. Let me tell you, child of God, let nothing discourage you. God is changing your story. Yeah. And he's changing your season. Yeah. You have been struggling left and right. You have been struggling in marriage. You have been struggling in business. But let me tell you, this time to live struggling has come. Yeah. The time to rest in him has come. That mountain that has been on your way, he told Zerubbabel through the prophet, he said, look, you mountain, you mountain that has stood on before Zerubbabel all this time when God has commissioned him to do something big, to do something great. Who are you mountain? He sent a prophet. He has sent me to you. Let me tell you, that mountain that stood on your way for many years, it is becoming a plain. It's becoming a plain. It's becoming a plain. Your season has changed. In fact, God is giving you a new dance. God is giving you a new walk. God is putting a new song in your mouth. If he did it before in Psalms 126, verse number one, and the people of God were shocked, and they said, when the Lord, they remembered it, they experienced it, they recounted their experience. They said that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like people who were dreaming. We were like people who were dreaming. And then we our mouth filled with laughter. And he put a new song in our mouth. And the people who did not believe in him, they looked at us and said, truly God has done for them a great thing. I'm telling you, they will testify on your behalf. They will testify on your behalf. They will say, surely this is God. When the witches came to compete against Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh, they were also reproducing some miracles. But it reached a point when it reached creation. Creation. How oh, God created the entire universe. He's the creator. Is the, is the creator. 
When he created it and the magicians tried to recreate also, they said they couldn't. And they said, this is the hand of God. This is the finger of God. I'm telling you, they will see what the Lord has done in your life. God is creating for you a new thing. God is creating for you a new thing. God is creating for you a new situation. And people will see it and they say, this is God. Look, the Lord is doing for you a miracle that cannot be contested. There are people who love to contest things. They love to explain things. They love to make things look natural. But I'm telling you, what the Lord is going to do for you, what he's doing for you, cannot be contested. It is, shall not be contested. That cancer is leaving you. That tumor is going. That tumor is going. That curse of poverty shall be no more in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we thank him. Just give the Lord another mighty hand of praise. That chain cannot hold you anymore. That chain cannot hold you anymore. That spell of the witch cannot hold you anymore. That evil covenant made in your village, made in your foundation, cannot hold you anymore. Something is changing. Your season is changing. I say your season is changing. Times and seasons are in his hands. Times and seasons are in his hands. He's going to shock the wicked one. The creator of the universe. He has decided to call you his own. My own son, my daughter, he has decided to call you, yes, his own. And let me tell you, when he speaks, no one can change it. When he locks, no one can open it. He has decided to open for you that door. No one can close it. I said, no one can close it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. You are lifting us come. Amen. You are lifting us come. Amen. That's what the Lord has asked me to tell you. That you are lifting us come. Amen. It doesn't matter how the, the pit that you are in. I don't know what kind of pit you are in. You were in. But you are lifting us come. Amen. Your time to celebrate has come. Amen. Your time to make profit has come. Your time to sing has come. Your time to enjoy peace has come. Praise God. We have a good God. Psalms 105, verse 17 to 19. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant who's fit their heart with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. Praise God. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Joseph received a word from God. He received a word. In Christ, you have received a word. The Bible says that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Whatever Jesus came for, whatever he declared, It's a prophecy that must happen in your life. 
When God gives you a word as his child, as a born again, when God gives you a personal word, a promise, a prophecy, that prophecy is intubated. That prophecy is tested. Your faith is tested. Your character is tested. Then time comes when that word is birthed into reality. Joseph received a word. God gave him a word. God gave him a word. And he shared it with his family. He shared it with his brothers. And you know what they told him? He said, no, it is impossible. Some people may have known what the Lord wants to do for you. And they have told you it won't happen. Even when Jesus came and he spoke to his own, even to his family, we are told that the, some of the members of his family did not believe in him. So don't get surprised when your family members don't believe in you. Don't be surprised. It happened to the Lord, but it will not change anything. Be on the same page with the Lord. Say what the Lord says. Don't say your own thing. Don't say what they say. Don't say what the newspapers say. Don't say what the unjust system that you have on earth here says. Say what the Lord says. Joseph refused to forget his dream. How do we know that? Because God gave him a word in the dream. He showed him how he was going to lift him up and make him a powerful ruler who would be a blessing to his own people. They couldn't believe. They thought it was for his own good. At one point, he told them, you meant it when you wanted to hurt me, when you sold me as a slave, when you wanted to kill me, and I ended up in Egypt. You intended it for evil. But God intended it for good. Amen. I'm here to tell you that whatever evil you have suffered, God is turning it into good. Amen. God is turning it into good. Amen. I say your season is changing. Amen. That's what Joseph told them. He suffered many things contrary to what God has said. Let me tell you, you may be suffering contrary to what the word of God promises you. Don't let it discourage you. Jane, you may be suffering. You may have suffered. But let me tell you, your season is changing. Amen. You, in New Living Translation, verse 19 says, until the time came, to fulfill his dreams. The Lord tested Joseph's character. His dreams. Remember God gave him dreams. Two dreams. The one with the moon and the stars. The moon, the sun and the stars. And then there was that other dream of the sieve. In the field. And that word, he kept it in his heart. And we know it. How? When he was in Potiphar's house. When the wife of Potiphar tested him. Severely tested him. And yet he was the highest servant in that house. Potiphar only kept her from him. But the woman wanted Joseph. And he says, no. I have not arrived. And he said, I'm not going to dishonor my God. That meant he remembered the dream. Because if he had forgotten in the, the dream, he was going to wallow in sin. 
and the woman decided to accuse him and was thrown in the dungeon. You have been suffering. You ended in the dungeon. But let me tell you, you are near, you are near, and the time has come. When the suffering became intense for him, he was nearing the fulfillment of his destiny. The time of your fulfillment has come. Amen. A new season. We are told that there's a time and a season for everything under heaven. A time and a season. A time and a season for everything. There's something in your life that is coming to pass during this season. Amen. Oh, at this time, there's something coming to pass for you to begin a new season. Amen. The universe works in seasons. There's a time and a season for everything. So it was in the dungeon. And verse 19, we are told, until the time that his word came, until the time the promise came to fulfillment, his character was tested. Does he qualify? Does he qualify? You see, when God is going to give you big things, when he's going to commit big things into your hands, he refines you. He refines you. He works on your character. He works on your character. Don't think he hates you. Don't think he has forgotten you. He has been working on your character. Because your character determines where you end. Determines your destiny. It begins with a small thing. A thought in your heart. A thought. That's why you have to watch your thoughts. They must be in line with what God says. Watch your thoughts because your thoughts will result into words. You will speak them out. And remember the devil is listening. And what you speak out, you better watch it. You will begin to do it. And what you begin to do, you better watch it. It will become your habit. And watch your habit. As you continue, it will become your character. And your character determines your destiny. Where you end. Determines your destiny. And your character must be the character of Christ. Your character is who you are in Christ. And as you enter the new season, you better allow Christ to manifest out of your life. And remember the gifts of the Spirit that we were given. When you feel like you want to cast someone who needs really to have that curse, but you remember that you were given kindness. Oh yes, there are some people I feel like cursing, then that kindness comes. And God also showed me kindness. So I need to, I sometimes I say, now if I cast this one, this one has children. Hmm? The children will suffer. No, let me show him kindness. <laughs> and that's how God looks at us. <laughs> that is the character of Christ now manifesting. Because now you begin to imagine what the person will go through. Praise God. Amen. His character was tried. He was tested. He was refined. When gold and silver and all the minerals, they are tested with fire. How do you know that they're pure? They subject them to heating. They melt them. They melt them. When a metal with impurities is heated so strongly that it melts, it has melted, the impurities come on top. The impurities come on top. It comes on top. Then as it is solidified, the impurities are removed. 
that is now refining. The testing brings out the impurities on top. And then now, the, 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 the person melting them now removes those impurities. That is the refining process. The testing process is through it. Praise God. If it is not real, everything that is not real burns and comes on top. Your character will be tested. Remember what Proverbs says. That the prosperity of the foolish leads to their what? Yes. If you are not wise and you are not, you, you lack that wisdom, whatever the Lord brings into your hands, if you are not wise, it can destroy you. That's why character is very important. Joseph's character was tested and then his word came. Praise God. Amen. His word came. His word came. Let's look at, at Genesis 41, verse number 12 to 16. Then we shall look at 38 to 41. Now, we had the cupbearer of the king who was in prison together with Joseph and sent to the dungeon. The dungeon is an underground prison. A prison that is in underground. You, you, they, they take you down. They take you live down. That was a kind of prison where Joseph was. Now, verse number 12. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant, to the captain of the guard. He was brought from uh, uh, Potiphar's house because he, Potiphar was the one in charge prison, Pharaoh's prison. It was a commission of prison. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret Verse 13. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Joseph was ministering right inside the prison, in the dungeon. He was, the gift that God had put inside him was working. The gift was working. Your gift can always lift you up. Your gift can open doors for you. But for you to keep there your character, your character is what will keep you in that place and enable you to move from glory to glory. Now, when Pharaoh was troubled, Pharaoh was troubled with the dream. He had a double dream. That meant that plenty was coming and then famine was coming to the land of Egypt. But he didn't know. The dream troubled him so much. And he brought all kind of wizards and all kind of people to interpret it. They failed. And then this man here, the cupbearer, remembered. Hey, said, there's that young man in the prison who interpreted our dreams. And it came true. Mia was restored. The other man was hanged. No, Pharaoh, I'm so sorry. There's a man who can interpret your dream. Let me tell you. He said, I made a mistake. I forgot about this man. I forgot. I'm so sorry about it. No, it was not yet time. It's because Joseph told him, said, when you go, when you go back to your office, please remember me. Talk to the Pharaoh that I'm here in prison innocently. It is my brothers who sold me. The man forgot. Don't worry when people forget about you. Your time of remembrance will come. Amen. And I'm here to tell you the time for your remembrance has come. Amen. Brother Dennis, in fact, your time has come. Amen. You just celebrate God. <laughs> doors will continue opening before you. Amen. I said doors will continue opening before you. Amen. Because the Lord has decided to remember you. Amen. Praise God. So you just look at verse uh, uh, 14. 
Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. Out of the underground prison. He sent and called for Joseph. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. God will connect you. Amen. God will connect you to the people will lift you out. Amen. I said God will connect you in this city. Amen. God will connect you all over the world. Amen. This man became connected to the Pharaoh. You shall be connected to the president. You shall be connected to high businessmen. You shall be connected to different kind of people that you thought you would not know them. God is going to connect you. Amen. Martin, God is going to connect you. Amen. God is going to connect you. Amen. You see, it is the people you get connected to, you are destiny helpers that will bring a difference in your life. God will connect you in business. Amen. Yes. You don't just become a billionaire. God connects you to people who will help you to become a billionaire. You don't just get a job. God will connect you. There are people with so many qualifications. But you know, the world is warped. There's no justice. There's no righteousness. It is minimal. It's just by degrees. Even the people with best papers are left out. But I've seen people with be best papers left out. Then the Lord says no and opens the door for them. Amen. Oh, yes. Some of you already, you have a testimony. They will ask you, who is your godfather? Oh, yes. With us, we have, they boast about their godfathers. They boast and say, no, uh, you know, so and so is backing me up. Who is your godfather in that place where we have put our application? One of our members was asked that. Who is your godfather? After the interview, they asked her, who is your godfather? Hmm? I don't know whether she took time thinking about it or immediately she answered because she knew. <laughs> and she said, God. <laughs> and when <laughs> the communication came, all the people who had their godfather, they had never got the job. And this member of ours, who had God in heaven as his godfather, got the job. <laughs> you'll get that contract. I say you'll get that contract. I say God will connect you to someone in China. God will connect you to someone within Uganda here. God will connect you to someone in Nigeria. God will connect you to someone in UK and in USA. Let me tell you, you need to thank God for being in Africa. Because this is the place to be. This is the deciding place for the, the world economy now. It is Africa. And you are here. And we thank God for that. Praise God. Hmm? He was brought hastily out of the dungeon. I'm telling you, God is going to rapidly change your situation. Amen. He was brought hastily. When the time comes, everything will move at a high speed. Amen. Just look at what happened. He saved himself. He shaved himself. He shaved his beards. You know, when you look at the pictures of the, 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 the Egyptians, um, the, those days, the olden picture, you will find that they don't keep beards. At that time of Joseph, the Egyptians hated beards. That's why they made him shave his beards. They hated. You have to understand the protocol. Yeah? A protocol. Because he wanted, because he was going before the Pharaoh. So, so they told him the protocol. You don't need to go like this. You must change. They brought for him the razor. In the dungeon, there's no razor. God is going to change the way you look. Amen. I say it's changing the way you look. Amen. The Lord is changing the way you look. Amen. He shaved himself. 
He removed away the unnecessary air. And change is raining, man. Let me tell you, your dressing code is changing. Oh, your wardrobe is changing. It's changed the way what the prison clothes is discarded it. Let me tell you, the season of suffering that had clothed you, God is going to remove that cloth. Whatever raiment you have been putting on during all this season of testing, God is removing it and replacing it with something fit for a king. With something fit for a king. Fit for standing before a king. And you will have the wisdom of Joseph. You will have the wisdom of Joseph. The Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom to move in this next season. The Bible says you see a wise man, you will stand before great men. You people don't waste the wisdom the Holy Spirit can give you. Because wisdom will enable you to know what to do. When to do it. And how to do it. What to say. How to say it. And when to say it. Many years ago, I had some brethren in the church here. One of them was a son, a spiritual son, who comes from outside. He comes, brings his, his offering here, brings his tithe here, but he was not fellowshipping with us. But anything to do with money, it is here. He brings it here. Because he knew how God opened for him the door. It was from here. So he said, no, I cannot lose this altar. I cannot lose my priest. Whatever money I had must go there. So that I keep because the altar that raises you up is the altar that keeps you. Some people, when they're raised up, they disappear. They don't connect back to their altar that raised them up. Then they begin to come down. Just look at that. Simple. So he came here. And of course, he knew the members who were in the church here. And then he met a certain young lady here. Then he went and spoke it out. Where some other young men who were in the church here were also there. He said, if I were to marry this, that lady there here in this church here, this lady, I would have married her. She's a wise woman. She's a wise lady. She can change your life. She can do the right thing. And you know what? Someone among these men was listening. And quickly the man ran and proposed to the girl. And married the girl. And they were really blessed. Ladies, walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. <laughs> Joseph walked in wisdom. Praise God. And he came unto Pharaoh. And he came and he was connected. You are coming out. I say you are coming out of your dungeon. I say you are coming out of your dungeon. Let me tell you, I believe that Joseph applied some perfume. Your smell is going to change. Look at what Isaac told or, or Jacob when he was blessing Jacob. He thought he was blessing Esau. After he had eaten the venison, the venison, you know what a venison is? It is something that the man of God enjoys first. Imagine his father said, I'm carrying something. I'm carrying the blessing. I don't know when I'm leaving earth. I'm about to die, my son. I, can, I don't want to die with this. I want to offload it on you. I want to bless you. But I cannot also bless you. Go get your arrow and bow and go and look for vanishing. Say vanishing. Go and look for game meat. Come and prepare it. Make it nice the way I love it. And come and serve it. After I've eaten. 
and my soul has rejoiced, then I will bless you in the presence of the Lord. Just look at that. You just look at that. You see, there are principles, there are laws through which blessings are transferred. And in fact, what Isaac was talking about is what Jesus was talking about. Whoever receives a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's what? Reward. Every man of God carries a reward that he will offload to the person who comes with a blessing, with a prophetic offering. Imagine that was his own son. Church, learn something from him. That was his own son. You thought it, you, you think he didn't love his son? Esau? It was his firstborn. He said, go and look for vanishing. He would have just said, come, my son, come. Ah, receive, 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 receive. But there are laws, it will not pass. That's why we have given you opportunity here for a prophet's offering. So that something can always come, can always come. It's not me who has put it. There are so many ways that he has put where, through which you can get your blessing and and the mother of jacob had it and said jacob my son come and you know the mother loved joseph i mean jacob loved jacob i said i've had your father tell us how he has gone get a goat and prepare it the way he loves it put on the skin your father your brother's skin the one he puts on himself which smells like him. Put it on. And, and he prepared quickly and brought it before the father and put on that skin. So because, you know, Esau was airy and when he touched the boy, he said, who is this? He said, I'm your son. I'm your son, Esau. But you say, Esau had messed. He had sold his birthright. So in the spiritual, actually, Jacob was now the firstborn. Some people say he stole. He did not steal. He did not, he, this, this other Esau was unprincipled. He sold his birthright. And in the spiritual, things were changed. And so Esau was removed away from the line of receiving the first blessing. And Jacob was repositioned in his place. And the first thing Isaac said, he, he rejoiced and said, I, the smell of my son, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. Blessing has a smell. From today, your smell is changing. The smell of Joseph's chain, I know he placed on himself ointment and perfume. Your smell is changing. I say your smell is changing. I say your smell is changing. The smell of the blessing of the Lord is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, the people around Joseph changed. The people around you are changing. That a man is not a strong one. The people around you are changing. Imagine now the people around Joseph, <laughs> one of them was Pharaoh and his high officials. Can you imagine? They sat in a council. I'm telling you, they sat. You just look. Let's look at verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Wisdom. Wisdom. Is there another man better than this man? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For so much as God has showed thee all this, there's none so discreet and wise as thou art. Ask the Holy Spirit for counsel, for wisdom. Say, Lord, guide me in this transaction. Guide me in this business. Which way should I take? 
Who should I offer? Which offer should I take? Should I accept this man's proposal for marriage? But I know he's not saved. I know he takes alcohol, but he looks so good, he wants to marry me. I know he spends a lot of time in the bar. Lord, I feel like marrying him, but you better ask him. You better ask him for wisdom. And look at what was given to Joseph. Thou shall be over my house. And according to unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Praise God. Joseph was elevated. Your elevation has come. Amen. I say your lifting has come. You are lifting us calm. You are lifting us calm in the mighty name of Jesus. Fulfillment has come. Your word has come. The word of Joseph came. Your word has come in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, You are lifting us calm. Turn to another and say, My lifting has come. <laughs> <laughs> Give the Lord another mighty hand of praise. Dear friend, perhaps you have no saving relationship with God. And you love God. And you want to engage with Him. But you don't know how. I want to show you how. In John chapter 10, verse number 9, Jesus said, I am the door. Whoever enters to me shall be saved is the door into the kingdom of God. Right now, you can enter a relationship with the Almighty God. You can do that through a simple prayer of commitment that you can make to God right now through Him. And if you are ready to enter a relationship with God so that you can be a child of God, bona fide child, not just a creation, not just a creature of God, created by God, but a son, a daughter, follow this simple prayer of commitment after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive all my sins. I repent of my sins. Right now, I invite you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching church near you where you can go and fellowship in order to go spiritually. If you live in the city of Kampala, you're most welcome to come and worship with us at Victory Church of Christ Ministries International in New Zealand, Kampala. And the word we share in these services will never allow your life to remain the same. And let us know about the commitment we have made through our contacts on the screen. We'll send you some material through the mail, through your email, so that you can be edified and you can know how to walk in your new phone life with God. God bless you abundantly. I wait to hear from you. Amen.